Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Happy Monday morning to everybody out there. Uh, this crisp fall day, football season's happening, and we have a controversy boiling over in Bachelor Nation. Why producers silenced the difficult conversation regarding Eric's resurfaced photo from a high school yearbook where he wore blackface dressed as Jimi Hendrix. Now, Eric has apologized, but the real controversy that is boiling over right now is why producers are stopping them from talking about this more. Now, you might say, no, Gabby's been on multiple podcasts where she's discussed this issue, but as we unearthed on Saturday, Gabby was silenced by producers, as admitted by Rachel Recchia. Rachel said Gabby wanted to talk about it, and not only did Rachel say that, but it was deleted from a podcast that was shared, and we have the proof. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Would the producers do something so sinister as run their legal team uh, and comb through all the interviews happening and say, oh, you can't say that? Absolutely. As we've discussed uh, for you know a good while now, um, corporations uh, generally are psychopathic in the way that they act. They don't care about the feelings of humans. They're there to make money for their advertisers and create as much views and operate in that form. The producers are relatively faceless. There's no campaigns on Twitter to get them fired from their Neutrogena influencer ads, this or that. So they don't have to deal with a certain aspect of the audience that's demanding a conversation. So I'm going to share with you guys why I believe the producers silence Gabby and how they're playing both sides of the coin on the show that's the most watched show of the season the finale they had all these other conversations and then now they're just throwing the breadcrumbs the scraps out to the podcast saying oh you can talk about it here so then why was Rachel's conversation edited now we're going to get into all of that this reminds me of a video I made a couple months ago called Amber Heard's biggest slip up was edited out of interview by NBC now you don't have to take any sides on the Johnny Depp v. Amber Heard lawsuit that happened over the summer, but what's important here is seeing another corporation, NBC, take the same interview that was done with Amber. And by the way, I made this video and it got 1.5 million views. Uh, This was shown and reposted tens of millions of times to all these different accounts because you get to see in this video how nefarious the machine actually is. You truly do. One interview, and it wasn't edited for time, one interview had parts clipped out for the Today Show version, which is what they showed in the morning, and for the evening version, what they showed on Dateline. They color correct the visuals so that it appears different, so that the morning crowd is light and fluffy, and the evening cloud is dark and sinister. And not only that, on the morning version, they made it more favorable to one side, and on the evening version, they made it more favorable to another side, playing both sides of the coin. I'll share this with you real quick, but this was one of those things I just stumbled upon as a content creator. When I'm looking at different clips and I'm looking at different things to share, I like to go to the original sources. So when I went to Reddit and found that the Ben and Ashley I Almost Famous podcast had this clip about Rachel, I noticed when you looked at the bottom that it was 40 minutes long because the clip starts at the 34 minute mark and there's five minutes left. So it's 39 and 36 seconds long. That's how long it is. So I said, all right, I'll go to the original source and I'll watch this on the podcast app. And when I get to the podcast app, there's 30 minutes there. There. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but nine minutes and 46 seconds are missing. What the hell was said in that time? Well, here's one of the clips of what was said by Rachel, and then we can discuss why it was uh, ultimately clipped out. Mm -hmm. Um, Really important to bring those stuff up. We didn't see it, Uh and I'm not going to put you in the place to ask why we didn't, because I don't think you have the answer. So Ben says, I'm not going to put you in the place to ask you why we didn't see certain things that were edited out. And then, you know, giving knowing that legal wouldn't let her discuss why things were edited. And she still gives an answer, which ultimately was clipped out. Serious um, to why that wasn't shown mm-hmm. or talked about. But what? how do you think they navigated the difficulties uh, in a way that brought them to the finale happy and healthy as a couple? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't speak on, you know, the show or why certain things got cut. But I can speak on um, Gabby. And I do know that she was really walking into AFR wanting to have that discussion and wanting to bring that to light because I think a lot of times 
things do get pushed under the rug. And, and things were exactly that, pushed under the rug. So Rachel says, Gabby wanted to have the conversation and it doesn't take, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't take an intellect to realize that that conversation didn't happen, not because of time, it because it was a three hour episode, but that conversation didn't happen because the show didn't want it to happen. And then here's um, uh, afterwards what Rachel ultimately says uh, in what, in the, listen to the tone of her voice when she kind of hesitates about what she's allowed to share. Our relationship continuing to do so and learn and really have to talk to each other and teach each other and keep that open line of communication. Um, as for the text messages, I do know that he told her as soon to light to the public, um, whereas Gabby kind of has had so much time to process that and talk with him about it. So yeah, two very different situations. Um, here, right here. Pause. Yeah, it, it, it's difficult for sure that it, they both didn't really get to have as much light as they should have. Okay, so she pauses. And look at, there's no slight on Rachel. She's under these contracts. I'm very familiar with the contracts that the leads are put under and what they're allowed to say. And there's very specific things they're allowed to talk about. And they are not allowed to talk about the edit. They're not a lot allowed legally to speak, even when their contract is over. They're not allowed to talk about things that weren't shared. And in this case, the lack of conversation regarding blackface. So I'm just going to play for you what I exposed with NBC, and then I'm going to talk about why I believe the uh, the Bachelor producers uh, did it this way, why they let the conversation happen on some platforms and not on others. And there are other times. All so right. again, here's, here's just a quick clip of exposing NBC doing something very similar, but with NBC, we, we actually had the receipts of the full interview in versus what was clipped out. And we even had like a star of Real Housewives of, you know, New York City or, you know, I don't know, some famous people were like, no, they edit things for content because they don't have as much time. No, no, no. The edited video that they had for Dateline wasn't any shorter or longer than the previous video. They clipped out things that they didn't want that audience to hear. You got that? She said, you don't have the resources that say you or I do with the luxury of saying this is black and white. Now watch, I'm going to mute the original version, the big screen, and I'm going to play the audio from the picture in picture and now watch the difference. Emotionally and physically, you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white. You don't have the luxury of... So anyway, the, the whole video is fascinating because you can actually see the different audio blips and where the edits were actually taking place versus this conversation here, the podcast, the Ben and Ashley I Almost Famous podcast, where we don't get to see exactly what was clipped out. We just know they took that chunk out. And so the question people ask is, why did they take that chunk out? And and my general belief, and you can leave a comment, is that it wasn't a glitch. It wasn't something on accident. They took it out because on the largest show, they didn't want to ruffle feathers. They didn't want to ruffle feathers with their large conservative base of people that don't, that, that believe this is cancel culture. And again, you may be conservative. This is actually less political and mo more social. So it's not exactly a political issue, but it is a left and right divide. There are progressive people that want to have conversations conversations that believe that conversations and counsel is better than cancel. And then there are others that are saying that are still very upset saying, oh my gosh, can you believe the winner did this racist act and did all these things and the apology wasn't good enough. We want them to talk more about it. And you can have whatever opinion you want on the matter. I think conversation is good. I think any conversation that Gabby and Eric would have had on the finale would have helped uh, our, our world progress forward. To, it's very easy to say, you know what, this was bad 10 years ago. It's bad now. I was ignorant. You, you can say whatever you want to say. I'm not going to tell someone what to say, but I think any of those conversations help out. Now you might say, well, Chris Harrison was fired for trying to have a conversation to um, to put out the flames of the Rachel Kirk Connell uh, antebellum style photo controversy. Uh, that was slightly different um, and was also during a very heated time in our world. Uh, but it goes to show that when it came down to ratings, the Bachelor producers still wanted to have that conversation on air and rode the wave of the Black Lives Matter movement versus now they're playing a little more safe. They're not demanded. It didn't reach a critical point where the producer said, we have to have this conversation. And because of that, they decided they wouldn't. Now, some people have said, how come on my podcast app, I could hear that conversation, but then when I search 
searched it, it was gone. So this is how it works. When you're a podcaster like Ben Higgins, you have a podcast, you upload it to an RSS feed. What's an RSS feed? It's a feed that houses your podcast. There, there, There's plenty of different names for them. That's not important. But when you upload it to the RSS feed, it sends it to the different directories. It sends it to Apple, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, all these different directories, whichever ones you have signed up for, and then the user gets it on their phone. So if you're subscribed to the Almost Famous podcast, you might automatically get the download. Now, if the podcast decides they want to edit the audio, you've already got the download, so you're not going to get the new audio version versus someone like me who doesn't follow it. When I look for the audio, it just shows the new audio. So it doesn't just disappear entirely, although I believe the producers thought it would. I believe that they thought whoever it was on the legal or made this decision, when they decided to clip out a part of the podcast, I believe they thought, okay, it's gone, no big deal. No, it still exists out there for the people that already downloaded it onto their devices. Um, and every single directory is different. So iTunes and Spotify, they actually will ping the RSS feed like every couple hours. So if you upload something, it might not show up to your phone right away. It kind of gets lost in the cloud and eventually it'll make it, make its way onto its directories. So even though they removed it from the RSS feed, cause you know, I've had people on my podcast that have said, Hey, can you take down that old episode? And I go, sure, I'll take it down. And then the next day they're like, Hey, it's still up there. And it's like, look, I took it down, but it doesn't just disappear right away. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge about how the podcasting world works to understand why this conversation still existed. And of course, because it was clipped up and put on Reddit, there's no removing it now unless they legally talk to Reddit about some sort of reason why it should be missing. So it's a very interesting conversation to be had. When I first made the video on Saturday, I was a little um, hesitant to accuse the producers of clipping this out because podcasts do have glitches. But after several days, the audio, as far as I know, is still gone from the updated version. And they decided that Rachel saying Gabby wanted to talk about it, a violated whatever conspiracy they have to limit that conversation only to podcasts. And finally, I'll just say this, why would they let the conversation happen? As we see, uh, Gabby, the morning after the finale was able to talk about it right here. I think at first, you know, I, I was devastated. I had a pit in my stomach. I couldn't really believe it because I think I've worked so hard to educate myself and to become the woman I am today, which comes from wanting to push yourself, wanting to learn, taking that upon yourself to really grow because unfortunately you're not always taught these things when you're growing up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when it was right in front of my face, when I know myself, hopefully I... So anyway, there she is. So why did they let her go on Bachelor Happy Hour? Why did they let the conversation spill out onto all these other platforms? Because it wasn't ever about them not having the conversation. It was about producers trying to please as many people as possible. They tried to please the finale live show. They didn't want to botch it live on air, so they decided not to talk about it then. Uh, they, they didn't want people to say, oh, this is the woke cancel police, whatever people want to say. They didn't want to play to that crowd. They didn't want to lose more of their concerns conservative base who doesn't want to have those difficult conversations. So the next day they said, no, 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 talk about it on the podcast. So of course they let them talk about it on the different podcasts. But when it came to Rachel talking about the fact that Gabby wanted to have the conversation, that was a no go. So that's why they didn't play that part. All right, folks, that's the conspiracy of the day. And look, I mean, it's right in plain sight. That's how it is. We've got our final teacher of the day. We've been doing this all month long. Um, it's a, it's her uh, miss. Jesse is her name. And if you want to donate to her, you can click a link in the cart uh, that is a link in the comment section below and you can donate anything from pens and all the different things she needs um, uh, to help her classroom. Now, we've helped 30 to 40 different teachers over the course of the month. You guys have been absolutely fantastic with this. Uh, if there's any teachers I promised already that I would feature and I, for some reason, did not, a lot of times I'll say I'll feature a teacher, then I go to their Amazon wish list and it's not set up properly so we can't donate and then I'll feature them another day. If there's anyone I promised that we would feature and we haven't already, can you please send me a DM on Instagram and let me know, dneals, D-N-E-A-L-Z, and let me know. I don't want to, um, I don't want to tell anybody I was going to feature them and haven't already. If I didn't get to you, I actually feel terrible about this, but we've exhausted all of our resources. You guys have been so fantastic, but we have to end this. We'll probably do it next semester or at the start of next school year. Um, so anyway, if you, if I did promise that I would talk about your 
uh, teacher wish list. I do want to get to it. So definitely let me know. And I've also got big things in the works for the end of 2022. I'm going to be starting a podcast version of all of my daily content with original audio that kind of sums up how every single day went. You can go to my uh, newsletter, which is free. If you just click on the link below, you'll see in the pinned comment section, my newsletter, all you do is put your email first and last name and hit subscribe. And that'll get you up to date when I decide to release the new podcast, which I highly encourage everyone to be a part of, then you will be able to uh, get the first uh, kind of take at that. All right, folks. So that's all we have for this video. A ton of other content coming your way. All right. Again, more sinister things going on with the producers of The Bachelor. No surprises here. We'll talk to y'all in a little bit. Tomorrow night, Bachelor in Paradise begins. Can you believe it? We'll see you guys soon. Bye, everyone.